Athletic Conference uh, introduces its second commissioner, a very historic day for us. Uh, my name is Chuck Sullivan. I'm the Assistant Commissioner for Communications here at the conference. If there's anything that I or any of our team can do uh, to help make your day easier, please, by all means, let us know. We'll make it happen. Uh, our format today is very simple. Uh, we will hear first from Chancellor Philip Rogers from East Carolina University, followed by Commissioner Tim Pernetti. Uh, we'll have time for questions and answers following their initial remarks, and then both will be available uh, upon the uh, conclusion of the formal presentation for one-on-ones. Uh, we have lunch in the, uh, in the foyer area and drinks and beverages, uh, coffee uh, out there as well. The Wi-Fi information, most importantly, is on your, on your tables. Uh, to get us started today, we'll hear first from the Chancellor of East Carolina University and the Chair of the Americans Board of Directors, Dr. Philip Rogers. Thank you very much, Chuck. Good morning, everybody. It's good to see you. It's a great day for the American Athletic Conference. Once again, my name is Philip Rogers. I have the distinct privilege and pleasure of serving as Chancellor of East Carolina University and also as Chair of the American Athletic Conference's Board of Directors. I'd like to take just a moment and thank all of you for being with us here today to celebrate yet another landmark moment in the life and the history of the American, a day where we all come together to welcome Tim Pernetti as the second commissioner of the American Athletic Conference. And I think we should give him a round of applause. The American is a unique conference. We all know this. It values the dual mission of higher education and intercollegiate athletics, consisting of 15 prestigious institutions of higher learning. The American is firmly entrenched among the elite conferences thanks to its collection of national and individual championships, its postseason victories, and its commitment to providing the highest levels of support for all of our student athletes throughout the conference landscape. We're a conference that enters its second decade poised to continue our strategic ascension in the college sports environment. The foundation for that success was established and was sustained by our first commissioner, Mike Oresco, whose efforts made this a highly desirable position as we searched for his successor over the last several months. I don't have to tell anyone in this room that Mike Oresco has tirelessly served with distinction and loyalty, and he leaves this conference stronger today because of his exemplary leadership over more than a decade of service to the American Athletic Conference. Mike, on behalf of all of us in the conference, thank you for all you've done to guide this organization to a position of national prominence. I also want to take a moment and acknowledge the support and guidance of our outstanding search partner, Turnkey ZRG, along with its CEO, Lynn Perna, who led the search for us. And I want to thank them for administering a highly effective and a highly efficient search process that yielded exactly the results uh, that we had hoped for after hard work over the last several months. And so, Lynn, thanks to you and your team for your extraordinary efforts and for your expertise that contributed to an excellent outcome as a part of this search process. I want to take a moment and thank the members of the Executive Committee of the American Athletic Conference, the members of the Board of Directors, and all of our conference stakeholders, including our athletic directors, our senior women's administrators, our faculty athletics representatives. I want to thank our coaches, our student athletes, and so many other individuals who contributed to shaping this process and framing the profile for what we wanted, what we wanted to land in the next commissioner of this conference. And as I look out today, I also want to take a moment and thank the conference staff who worked tirelessly throughout this process, who dedicate so much time in their lives uh, to ensure the success of this conference. We want to thank you for all that you do uh, to make this work successful along the way. Together, we collectively carried out a thoughtful, strategic, and confidential search process to find the right innovative leader for this conference at a time when the tectonic plates of higher education and the tectonic plates of intercollegiate athletics continue to shift just beneath our feet. We were under significant pressure to get it right because much was at stake. There was much on the line, and I can stand before you confidently today that, to say that we did indeed get it exactly right with the appointment of Tim Pernetti as our new commissioner. We sought out a true leader. We sought out a true collaborator. We sought out a true competitor to take the reins of the American at one of the most critical times in our history. A leader that will be agile, fearless, and entrepreneurial in a material, materially changing landscape. And we found all of that in Tim and his background as a leader in the athletics industry. The primary trait that led us to Tim Pernetti was his versatility. 
He's held executive and leadership positions in intercollegiate athletics, at national television networks, in marketing and brand, branding, and most recently in secondary education, working with high-performing student athletes. The commissioner is, role is one that serves a variety of stakeholders, many times, uh, uh, many different stakeholders at the same time throughout one day. It requires a leader that is progressive and that is proactive as we adapt to the changing landscape of intercollegiate athletics. And it was that experience, along with Tim's dynamic vision for administering an innovative conference that serves its universities and its student athletes in an emerging environment that make him the perfect choice to be our next commissioner. And we know with that background that whatever comes his way, he'll be well prepared to handle it. I have every confidence that Tim will ensure the next great waypoints that we encounter together will be in the best interest of our conference and they'll be in the best interest of our student athletes and certainly in the best interest of the world-class member institutions that make up the American Athletic Conference. We're excited about the future and we all look forward to the success that we will without a doubt have under the leadership of Tim, Pernet Tim Pernetti as the commissioner of the American Athletic Conference. And I'm very pleased and honored now to present to you our new commissioner to share a few words with us today, Mr. Tim Pernetti. Wow. Good morning. Uh, I want to start by, by thanking Chancellor Rogers. Really have enjoyed uh, going through the process with you. Appreciate the effort to be here today and certainly the, the generous introduction. Uh, it's great to see everybody. There's a lot of familiar faces uh, already having fun getting reacquainted with old friends. Um, I want to thank uh, John Gilbert and Jared uh, for being here today. Um, Jesse as well, thank you for being here today. Some of our bowl partners, um, Rick and Scotty from the Cotton Bowl and from the Frisco Bowl, Sean and Kristen, thank you for being here and, and Missy from the Independence Bowl. Uh, he's not here yet, but my old friend Steve Hatchell is supposed to be here, and he's constantly late for things, so we'll, we'll, I'll talk to him after the fact. But to the conference staff, I've met a lot of you over the last 12 hours. I'm excited to work with you. And, and thanks to everyone in the media and, and certainly all of you watching online. I want to thank the board of directors. Uh, this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for me, and I appreciate your belief in me to serve the 7,000-plus student-athletes millions of fans, 15 institutions, as the commissioner of this conference. The last 10 days have literally been incredible for me. And I've received such a warm welcome from ADs, SWAs, faculty reps, so many more. I've known Mike Oresco for 20 years. Uh, he is a great human being. And while he couldn't be here today, I want to thank Mike. Like his advocacy and the strong foundation he's leaving behind is something that I greatly appreciate and will benefit from going forward. And I look forward to continuing my conversations with Mike. We've had many uh, over the last weeks and my relationship for years to come. So after I met the board the first time, I traveled to Austin, Texas for Easter weekend with my family. And I was walking on the golf course with my sons, Connor and Max, and they said to me, like, why do you want to return to the college business during a time that I could probably only describe as dynamic, transformational, and uncertain? And my wheels just started turning in my head. And what I thought was during this historic time in collegiate athletics, is the true mission the same as it was when I was a student athlete? Is it the same as it was when I was an athletic director? And who does the business actually truly serve? And the, the answer is simple. It's, it was, it is, it always will be student athletes. Young people with dreams that use sport as a vehicle to get an education. And a few of them will go pro, and that's great, but all of them will benefit from learning valuable life skills. Ideally, they'll graduate, and they'll prepare, as we say at IMG Academy, to win their future. I'm a product of the mission, and today, everything that was afforded to me as a student athlete, the purity of collegiate athletics, it's at risk. In 1989, I was a senior at Ramapo High School in New Jersey, and I started to get recruiting letters like when coaches sent you an actual letter in the mail, I have a shoebox full of them. And I became a student athlete at Rutgers University, my state school down the street. I was a six foot five, 200 pound tight end. I blossomed to a healthy 275, thanks to all the pizza and the shakes. And I have so many great memories of being a student athlete, but there's two I wanna share with you. One happened on the field and one happened in the classroom. So the first, it was a perfect, crisp fall afternoon in 1992 at Giant Stadium. We were playing number eight, Penn State, and it was sold out. And early in the game, 
we ran a pass play, and I was a decoy to free up our best receiver, which clearly Penn State knew, because suddenly I was like 30 yards down the field, and I'm wide open. Quarterback Ray Lucas threw the pass. I caught it, got the first down. And as I got up off the turf, I spotted every Pernetti in North Jersey, and there's a lot of us, okay? They were on their feet. They were hugging. They were waving. They were celebrating like we just won the national championship. I never felt anything like that in my life. And I know I'll never forget it. The second was two years later. So best-selling journalist Armin Katayan was speaking at my journalism class at Rutgers. And after the class, he gave me his business card. I literally hounded this guy for months to help me break into the sports media business. I'm pretty sure he did it just to get me to stop calling him on the phone. But that led me to ABC Sports. And I learned from great leaders there. Jonathan Lease, Keith Ritter, John Littner, the importance of building on the foundation of a powerful organization and managing conference-wide media contracts. And years later, I was really lucky to be part of a great team at CSTV. We took a big swing there. We were the first ever network dedicated to college sports. And what you see today, we paved the way for conference networks that are thriving in the industry today, just as our founder and one of my mentors, Chris Bevilacqua, saw it happening. So a few years later, I took the athletic director job at my alma mater. It was early one morning. I was sitting in my office eating a Taylor ham egg and cheese sandwich. If you know, you know, okay? I was working with our CFO, Janine Percaro, and we were working on how to maximize Rutgers' greatest asset, the number one media market in the country. And we started from scratch. We walked with interns. We put our magnets on cars when fans were in stadiums watching our teams play. We told a national story in the media. We built consensus. We were absolutely relentless. It took everyone. It took buy-in. It took a bold, unapologetic approach to elevate the enterprise and land Rutgers in the Big Ten Conference. I know what the media are thinking. We'll get to that. And there's that song. Isn't it ironic to be standing here today? In 2015, I met Patrick Weitzel, Ari Emanuel, Jason Lublin, and Mark Shapiro at Endeavor. And they gave me this awesome opportunity to run IMG College. And I was really blessed to work with so many great university presidents and athletic directors. Joe Castiglione, Chris Del Conte, Jen Cohen, David Benedict, John Gilbert. And we elevated their enterprises by creating more resources for student athletes. That was the business. And that led to a natural transition to IMG Academy. I've been working alongside more than 1,000 absolutely remarkable people to innovate the future of sports education. It's been an incredible ride. But all of this, everything on the journey, sports media, on campus, pro sports, building business enterprises, it's prepared me for today. And the responsibility that I know this resilient conference will demand from its commissioner. So as we head into the future together, student athletes of this conference are gonna be at the center of every conversation and every decision that we make, okay? We will do everything possible to deliver a world-class experience, to provide the resources and the access they deserve to earn degrees, become leaders, and win the championships that everybody wants to win. So together, as a conference, as we're looking at the future, we're going to build on the foundation and the true mission and really the purity of collegiate athletics. We're going to elevate the enterprise, like get ready. We're going to take some big swings and we'll innovate and lead in the future. This conference has an opportunity to break new ground. We're going to be proactive. We're going to be disruptive. And we'll maximize every opportunity that's in front of us. Whether it be capitalizing on relationships in private equity, innovative naming rights, creative corporate partnerships, conference-wide NIL resources, maverick postseason models. We're going to turn the conference room at the office into a literal shark tank of fun. Nothing will be off the table. So I'd like to wrap it up and thank my friends, colleagues, mentors. I could go, this could be an Oscar speech. There's so many of them, but I've learned so much. I've been encouraged. I've been supported. I've learned valuable lessons. I want to thank all of them. You know who you are. And then to my family. So when I was 13, my dad, who was a pharmacist, he passed away. And in his day, this is my era anyway, the pharmacists were 
higher up than the main floor of the store. They were sort of up above on a perch. But I watched my dad. I used to go to work with him on Saturdays. And he constantly left to go down and look at his customers in the eye and help them and talk face to face. And he taught me the value of care, building trust in relationships, and accountability for who you are and what you mean to people. His lessons in work ethic, the value of education, his passion for sports, like they live inside me and my two brothers today. Thanks to my mom. It was no picnic raising three boys. I'm sure of that. And she's tougher than people know, and I want my mom to know how grateful we are and how much I love her. And lastly, to my first team, my wife, Danielle, who is a literal superhero. We met in the training room at Rutgers in 1992, nursing minor injuries. And she was also a student athlete at Rutgers in lacrosse. I'm going to look in the camera for this one because I, I literally can't imagine my life without you and your fierce loyalty and support. My daughter, Natalie, who's competing in lacrosse at IMG Academy today and headed to Roanoke College as a student athlete in 2025. My son, Connor, who's just down the road in Austin, Texas, working for MLS Club Austin FC. And then my son, Max, who's finishing his last month as a student athlete in basketball at Gettysburg College. Uh, thank you for your willingness to just take the big swings together. I love you guys. To our 15 institutions, every student athlete, everybody on the staff, every coach that's listening, all the administrators, I can promise one thing. I'm going to champion everybody every single day. I can't believe I'm here. I'm excited about the future. I want to thank everybody for the effort to be here. Uh, I look forward to your questions. So with that, I'll give it to Chuck. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you, Tim. Uh, for members of the media in attendance, if you have a question for either Tim or Chancellor Rogers, um, please raise your hand. We will get a microphone to you. Please uh, be sure to introduce yourself and your affiliation. Raise your hand for questions, please. We'll start with Chris. Uh, Chris Fernando from The Athletic, uh, I guess for Dr. Rogers, um, as you went through this process, what were the characteristics you were looking for in a commissioner and, and how did uh, Tim meet them? Well, all you have to do is uh, listen to his uh, remarks and hear his background and you see uh, how we checked off every single box uh, as a part of this process uh, to land Tim Perdetti. Uh, we were looking for someone with an entrepreneurial spirit, competitive spirit, an innovator, someone who would um, take advantage of opportunities to leverage those words that he described in his remarks, being disruptive, taking big swings at a moment when it was most critical, someone who could inspire our student athletes, someone who could wave a magic wand as we look into the future and take um, strategically positioned risks at the moments that they were uh, most needed, uh, someone who knew the business, who had relationships and contacts and could pick up the phone and um, uh, reach key players in the industry in a moment's notice. Uh, and we were looking for a winner, and uh, that's what we found in, in Tim Pernetti. Brett Vito, Dent Record Chronicle. Mike was a very vocal advocate for gr the American Athletic Conference in general and group of five teams across the, across the nation. What is your view of where the American fits in in the overall hierarchy of college sports and how what do you see as its potential moving forward? You nailed it on the first part. Uh, you know, Mike certainly spent every ounce of himself advocating, you know, for the American Athletic Conference and, and storytelling and helping people understand its evolution. And thanks to Mike, we have a, a great platform for the future. And I think the conference is uniquely positioned. I think the hierarchy conversation is a challenging one because going back to what I had said earlier, things like collegiate athletics or college football, it's their growth sports. It's accretive for the entire industry to move forward together instead of some at the cost of others. And I think that's where we're starting to move, which will be a huge challenge, you know, for our conference. But I think we're uniquely positioned in between all of that that's going on in the hierarchy. Um, you won't hear power five and group, you're not going to hear those words out of my mouth because just in general, I think that where we're headed as an industry should refocus itself on what we're actually trying to do rather than just the bottom line. 
Sam Mark Walsh and FWA. Um, in the last couple of years, the role of conference commissioners changed quite a bit. I mean, even, even the last couple of years. How do you foresee a, a role of a conference commissioner from even what it was a couple of years ago, and how do you plan on attacking what are a, a bunch of new and different problems that no one has seen before? Well, first of all, it's good to have New Jersey in the room, Mark. It's good to see you. Um, the role has changed, and what's interesting is you see a lot of hires in commissioner roles from, from outside the industry, and I think the, the great part about that is where the industry is going requires some innovative thinking and maybe requires fresh sets of eyes. And all of the commissioners bring different skill sets to the table. The collaboration is the thing that we need to keep everybody focused on because everybody needs to work together, you know, a little bit more. But I think the on-campus experience in particular is something that will help me with the why and the how and the who the decisions are going to directly impact. Like that four years I spent on campus was, for lack of a better term, educational. Like seeing it on the ground is very, very different from what people see from the top. Sean J. Roger from CBS Sports over here. Uh, this is for Dr. Rogers. Uh, or, uh, so, you know, obviously the American had a commissioner before who did come from more of the television and business side. Um, how much did you weigh the possibility of going more business? How did you weigh the possibility of going more uh, kind of educational background and, and how did uh, Tim Pernetti kind of emerge? Yeah, we, we took a broad look across the entire country, various industries from media to sports to more traditional approaches. I think what was um, most interesting to us about Tim was that he covered virtually all of those. Uh, and uh, that was certainly an attractive set of features because he has relationships in each of those areas. He has knowledge of each of those areas. And um, you, when you can rely on someone that has a uh, set of uh, engagement tools that, have, um, that have, are very broad throughout their career, uh, the opportunity to, uh, to move forward with that candidate clearly uh, surfaced very quickly in a unanimous way for our search committee. Other questions? Tim Morgan Uber with the American. When you think of first priorities, first goals on the job, what are some of the things that come to top of mind? It's a long list. And the hard part about priorities is I think sometimes when you come into something new, you develop too many of them. And for me, I'll do what I do and every new opportunity I've been able to face in my career is I'm going to put myself out there, I'm going to ask a lot of questions and I'm going to listen. You know, the, the idea of coming in and, all right, new leadership, let's come in with the baseball bat on our shoulder and let's change everything. It's going to start by listening and learning like I have a lot to learn. And while I have been in the business, on a college campus, in the media industry, it's changed dramatically in the last five years. So I'm looking forward to the conversations and learning a lot more. I'm going to drive people a little crazy with questions, but I think the best case scenario for the membership is I don't think there's any excuse not to be well informed about not only the industry, but what are the challenges on the campuses? Because in the end, at the end of the day, we have to do our part to fight for the conference, to advocate for student athletes, and to create more resources for the campuses because college campuses and athletic departments have never faced more challenges than they do today. Any final questions from in here? All right, well, that, thank you, gentlemen, for the, uh, for the formal presentation. We'll wrap that up, and we'll clear the stage. If you just stick around for, uh, uh, while we prepare the, the space for a photo opportunity with uh, Chancellor Rogers and Commissioner Pernetti. Uh, for the media, uh, lunch is available in the room here, and, uh, and both gentlemen will be available for one-on-ones as needed as well. Thanks so much. Thank you, everyone.